Namibian Development Trust is a non-governmental organization founded in 1987 by different civil society organizations to channel aid from European commissions to victims of apartheid. It later transformed itself to play an active role in community development. 1987 was just a few years before Namibia's independence, so I believe that there was a realization to mobilize Namibians, sensitize Namibians about what independence means, because independence means being able to stand on your own, being able to do things for yourself. So there was a whole culture of self-reliance that needed to be inculcated in the minds of Namibians. It was also meant to be able to create and strengthen civil society structures to prepare Namibians, because before independence, our struggle was mainly about the resistance. But we had to prepare Namibians to be able to stand on their own, to be able to do things for themselves. NDT works with historically marginalized rural and urban communities to build their power to act for social change through capacity building and advocacy initiatives. We are thankful for the NDT because they assist us with the capacity building to training the committee to uh, develop the plan and the process for the conservancy scene. And also they assist us to arise um, awareness among the community, how to come up with the, uh, the annual general meeting. And uh, they also assist us to look the fund from the donors and from the support to organization so that we can be able to, to achieve our daily basis activity. NDT was helping a lot. You know me, Masha, two of them, really they help a lot. Uh, especially, we, if we, we could not have these people, we could not have gone anywhere. The Namibia Rural Women Empowerment Project is one of such initiatives as the organization responded to the request made by the leadership of the Namibian Rural Women Assembly. Last year, we were approached by Namibia Rural Women Assembly. They were looking for an organization which they can work with, which can help them to be capacitated. So they approached NDT, and being that one of our objectives, organization objectives, is to see that women and youth plus the vulnerable groups are empowered, we welcomed their request. And we put in a proposal to OSISA, uh, which OSISA responded positively and gave us funding for one year, which has been running from November 2016 to November 2017. The Namibia Rural Women Assembly, NRWA, was initiated in 2010 by rural women. Namibia Rural Women's Assembly is an organization initiated some years back. It's a, most of us as women, we are engaged in farming, either crop or livestock. And then we are members of Namibia National Farmers Union. However, they felt the challenges affecting rural women and their livelihoods were not addressed adequately at these platforms. So with Namibia National Farmers Union, we are exposed to different activities and at one platform when we met um, from different countries, we, are reali we realized that there is a need for rural women to organize themselves at the regional level as well as at country levels. The main aim of NRWA is to create space for rural women to discuss, share and to meet in solidarity under the theme Women are Guardians of Land, Life Seeds and Love. So our initiation started in 2009 when we convened for the very first time as rural women from eight countries in Limpopo province in South Africa. So the very first countries we met in 2008 it was Namibia, 
South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Lesotho, Mozambique, Swaziland, and Malawi. So that's where we discuss this idea and then adopt it at that stage. And then we started at the, at the regional southern level. The purpose of the Namibian chapter is to bring together rural women from all regions of Namibia across ethnic, linguistic and sectoral divides in order to discuss their particular and collective concerns and pave ways to overcome these challenges. Their main objective why they set up Namibia Rural Women Assembly is to advocate for the rural woman in Namibia. Uh, when women that are living in the, in the rural areas realize that most of the issues that are affecting women that are living in the rural areas are not addressed on existing platforms that were there. And mainly most of these women, they were, they were in the rural area and the main activities they were maybe farming and small business and et cetera, et cetera, and home based care. So most of the women that were working in the rural area as, as caregivers, they were not having enough, enough uh, wages to sustain their livelihoods. And mostly the women that were in the, in the rural areas, they were in subsistence farming. And most of the implements were not accessible to them because even, even if you are in the, in the rural area and the services are somewhere, when you go and register yourself for those services, it will be hindered by so many contributing factors. 70% of the Namibian population is residing in the rural areas. So they are affected by health, uh, education. Some of them are also involved in small scale mining, some in small scale fishing, crop production, livestock production. So they must really I need to build the capacity so that they must know their rights and to know for a different or whatever need they have to go to a certain office, who to approach the relevant authority they have to approach so this knowledge was really lagging. Uh, so that's why we thought let's approach um, NDD in order to assess us in writing the proposals. This resulted in the formulation of the Namibia Rural Women Empowerment Project, NRWEP, within NDT. The key focus was to help this organization, the Namibia Rural Women Assembly, to clarify their strategic intent. In, in other words, helping them to be clear about what do they see as, as, as their role in the Namibian landscape. What role will they need to play? What will be their strategic niche? Uh, helping them to clarify their vision, their mission. Those were the, the ideas. So we uh, took them through a, a strategic planning process to be able to be clear about what is the strategic direction. Under the Namibia Women Empowerment Project, NDT was supposed to build the capacity of Namibia Rural Women Assembly members. Under the project, we have been working directly with 20, 80 regional focal persons, which represent, those 28 represent the 14 regions. So that means two per each region. These uh, focal persons were trained uh, as um, leaders and to take the message back to the grassroots level. When we started and when we said, well, let's go back to our constituencies, and then the, the women were given also introduction letters, and then we, they were also tasked, when you go back to your region, go to the relevant authorities, who are your partners, who will assist you in, in different ways. So therefore, we can mention that in some regions, at least the collaboration was so good that this woman has been acknowledged and being regarded as part of the stakeholders in the region, whereby whenever a stakeholder meeting takes place, then they are also called to this meeting as, uh, as stakeholders. So we have been working with them, training them in different skills, like organizational development, advocacy and lobbying, mobilization, proposal writing, and so many other skills, so that they can be able as they are the regional focal persons representing their regions, they can go back, they have been going back to their regions and do the groundwork with the rural women at a grassroots level. The overall goal of the project 
was to strengthen and enhance the sustainability of the self-organization by women in rural areas in order to maximize their agency in influencing policies. Namibia has a lot of good policies, good laws, but and it is a signatory to many international laws which promote gender equality, but somewhere, somehow, there is a missing link. For women uh, to be empowered to have the skills to uh, uh, the lobbying and advocacy skills, you, you will be able to influence the policies, any legal frameworks that affects the life of of women, because uh, we know that we have got so different policies and laws that governs the country that affects the life of women, but sometimes because of lack of knowledge, we are not able to influence those, or maybe just yes to know you have got the right to know the rights. Our key focus was to strengthen the leadership skills, mobilization skills of these 28 women that were, for example, uh, chosen uh, by them to be able to say what is their task, what should they do when they go out to the different regions to be able to mobilize women to be able to set up local structures. As part of the first phase, the project targeted 28 rural women representatives known as Regional Focal Persons, RFPs. We have got focal persons in each of the other regions, 13 regions. In Kunene, we have got um, four because of the administrative uh, issues, because it's a northern part, uh, the region is divided by the Vedendro cotton fence. So to make things easier, we have got two in Kunene North and two in Kunene South, so which makes uh, the current number of the focal persons 28. They have done uh, a lot, like they, 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 they did advocacy skills development workshop program for us, the Rural Women's Assembly. They have trained us on how to advocate for rural women because we are the voice of these women. And they told us the, the importance of advocacy factors that contribute to a successful advocacy initiatives and their approaches. In December 2017, NDT undertook a journey to Tkuma, a community 40 kilometers outside Rundu, to participate in a two-day program on gender-based violence. This was in response to one of the critical findings from the Community Needs Assessment Workshop conducted in this village in October 2017. We have a regional focal person in Kavango East. Through the NEEDS Community Needs Assessment Workshop, which she organized in one community. The capacity building we do with the 20, we have done with the 28 women, I think have they have those skills which we have equipped them with have done a great contribution. Namibia Rural Women's Assembly, we are saying that nothing for us without us. You cannot sit somewhere and decide for us why you don't understand us. Maybe at the end of the day you will bring us something we don't need. You will, you will represent us there on, on United Nations Conference or wherever, and then you say uh, in the rural community ABCD must happen. Maybe you initiate something that we really don't need. And then by the end of the day when, you, when things are here, we don't even appreciate it because it's not what we need. So we have been training them in advocacy, how do you advocate if you have an issue? You don't need to toy toy around, but you need to use advocacy skills or lobbying skills to convince the person you want to get something from. Mukonda, Vashishwak, Shongopo, 
tuvama kapitua kushonga. Makura udito ngoli kadito paliparu. Omongoli ukayara, uruwane business kwa tuko na kubiwana. Uruwane vinke kwa tuko na kubiwana. Makura ngoli pamdinde wana umoe tu pungena ukuayara shini ameni ni mtu mke. Na umaliva kuniko konika wana kufura nkaruwa nte yo business. Kwa ndi wale ni shani stiki veri kipa mkunda pato stiki veri kishava dinkantu. Pato nga ovova ruwa nangapo ova kufura kuta pato stiki veri kikuwa dinkantu. Shimposhi na ova kayeru ke. Kwa ato makura kutukuwa na ngoli na mpiri kukiri seva na turengi shini kai teni vya weno. Kwa ndi ukastra gyalenga kumukunda wapeke ukashani stiki veri ki. Poshu kaiti wevini kwa vana mui, vana mshia, vana shia na vo, ovovantu vana kuvisha na. Makura kai tangu li udito mwa dinka tu kuli paruli avo. Makura kuyenda tangu li vachua yuko tangu li vatunda tangu li pamukunda wa arava shwene kwa vende vaka shia na stiki veriki. Papa katika kwa katika pamoja kapi treatment ya pamoja ni kapi shina wa na wa makura kutanda shirohe poruna ya pamoja kaya kuniango liva dinka ndoa wa rume kuvura wa wa mati kuvura wa karengo li shikuna ku kuna kunua tu pungo mara wa mukinda mukonda mukinda kapi ya karandi rouni ni nampiri ponda una wana kuvura ukawure tu po ma dito ana kar arwa shoneka mavango ira kumaga mena kumavango. Kuvura mtu ameke business, kuvura mtu repo shine tuture bila bila wangu leo eno tuture po business. Mara kaya pon kwa mtu wangu ndiwa kwenye kasi mwangu hao, makura nayo kisha ikanga tangu yu business. Sikuwa demu iruani ni mandi en, mara kwa tuli wangu kumuna kuli wana kwenye kasi muruani ni po yu business. Dingo udito na karo pongo. Udito wa kunda mwa kama leo wa kunda mwa kara pa arua shone kwa kwa to kuwa na vini kivyeye rami yu mandi yao. Kwani koko kuduka nanta ni watu ravi ni kipanti shi ya kuliaba na vavo unene po iratwe taka ra kuna kuarua shweneka kwani wuli me tani paya ya angaru we dora na ngondwe kujupa na ngondwe utropshitaura ngoli kwenye kapewa kuiaba kasi tama kura shifamuru na ngondwe kwa tove ni viyera mukvura ngai vipire kumvura mora kwa tope opa umtu ra uyo na ngondwe. From our intervention, our engagement, uh, there's been physical abuse happening in the community, as well as emotional abuse that are being experienced. It's not only women, so men have also raised that they are really experiencing abuse and you could see that they didn't really know that they have the right or they have that uh, opportunity to also report to our office. I would say domestic violence is one of the issues and rape, especially of younger children. Mm. Kapiri kapumu yivira siku ni kovi na piru ki. Kula vitu akusia na ngoli tuwe. Kile shishuru wa na ngoli muna kusie ndi tangoli. Ndisi yende muuta wa kora. Ndoguru wa ntu wa kengeshi ya ae. O shino shpani shino vya nami chivya kapiri kile kapiri wa ruwa ni. Awa nuna ni wana kutula mkuna kuru wa na nawa nawa. Nimbe tu akusia na kongoli mbeo. Kutu ya nendiru hepa lwa mtu marute puke mwone ndi kutu ye langawe ni kepa. Ma, ma, wanya wana kuwano maano wapu ya kutantera. Ndike pa wayewe ni watu tantera kumano wamoe wali kutikichinja kumukaro wetu wamu mkawano.